All right, team, so not working a specific homework, um, but we are gonna have a quick discussion on updating safety, right? So the idea behind this, and I'm in the TC on page 15-15, right, at table 15-5, uh, um, it's determination for updating safety based on updated non-standard conditions. So the idea behind this is if I do preoccupation safety, um, you know, before I go to the field, whatever it is, I do my um, computations and I get a pre-oc safety T, right? Once I occupy my firing position, right, and I'm accounting for our, all five requirements now, I've got updated MET, I've got updated prop temp, I've got MVVs. Uh, basically, I have a GFT setting, right? I'm, I'm not um, calculating data under standard conditions anymore. Um, I may not necessarily want to have to go back through and do all of the math to calculate post-occupation safety. So what I have the ability to do is to just pick a specific point on my basic safety diagram to recalculate data. Um, and then I, I look at the difference between the data on my old safety T and the new data that I have um, that is accounting for those five requirements, right? So uh, the way that we do that is like I said, there's a step action drill for this on page 15-15 in your TC. Um, this is in chapter 15, which is safety. So um, I'll have this out next to me, uh, but there's really a, a, a couple of handouts that, that, I, that I make, right? Uh, the first is we're gonna identify which corners we need to shoot um, in order to determine whether or not we need to update safety. And the second is this flow chart that we use over here uh, to go through to determine whether or not we need to update safety based on what that new data looks like, okay? So before we get there, let's just start with this right here. So if I'm in the TC on page 15-15, you know, it says step one, the FDO must be able to account for all five requirements that weren't previously accounted for in the old safety and manual mission processing. This is performed through an updated GFT setting, just like I discussed, right? And step two, it says we perform a safety verification mission with the base piece location. So basically after we occupy, um, we get the charts laid, we get data bumping, we get GFT settings applied. Um, I tell the chart operator and the computer to go ahead and calculate a mission to a specific point, right? Um, for low angle, we're going to determine data from the base piece to the upper right corner of the target area, meaning the maximum right deflection at the maximum range, okay? So what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk through here. I've got some examples of some basic safety diagrams with dog legs because these are a little bit more complicated, right? Um, basically, what this is saying is I'm going, to, I'm going to select the maximum right deflection at the maximum range for low angle. All right, so what that means is I'm going to shoot this corner right here. I'm going to have them calculate data to this particular corner. The reason why is because the uh, greater the range, the higher the probable error in range for my quadrant, the higher for the probable error in range for my deflection, and also the greater the drift. Okay, So once I've selected the point... Okay, what, what part of my safety T would that be on, right? So it's my uh, max max range on the right. So this is a dog leg on the right. So that'd be this max quadrant here. And it's my deflection, my overall deflection on the right side. So it'd be this quadrant, so upper right, and then this deflection over on the far right. Now what about this one here, right? Remember, we're looking for the maximum right deflection at the maximum range. So this is not the maximum range, right? This is the maximum range. And then I want the maximum right deflection, which would be this one here, okay? Now, where would that be on my safety tee? It's not in the same place, right? Because it's in my max range dog leg on the left. So that'd actually be this quadrant here. And it would be this deflection, the center deflection here, okay? And then uh, what about this one here? This one's pretty easy. Uh, maximum range, maximum deflection on the right. I'd have the box operator calculate this data here. And I'm going to compare this to uh, the old data on the pre ox safety T here at my max range and then at my overall right deflection here. Okay. And then for um, this min range dog leg here, it's the exact same thing. Max range, maximum right deflection would be this point right here. So that would be my max quadrant. So I would compare the new data shot at this point with the max quadrant here and the uh, overall right deflection here, okay? Now for high angle, uh, the rules are a little bit different, right? It says maximum right deflection at the minimum range. The reason why, right, because for high angle, remember the projectile is in the air longer, you know, and the quadrant is higher, the, uh, the, sh the closer to the gun that I get for high angle. So it's going to be maximum right deflection at the minimum range. So for this one, so minimum range is right here. And the maximum right deflection so would be this corner right here. 
and remembering that my minimum range is associated with my max quadrant for a high angle, it would I would compare this new data with this quadrant on my pre-ox safety T and this deflection on my pre-ox safety T, okay? This one, same thing, min range, uh, maximum right deflection, which is still gonna be uh, my maximum quadrant here. And then it's gonna be um, my overall right deflection on this side is what I'll compare my new data to, okay? And then down here, so my minimum range is this dog leg here on the left. So my minimum range and my maximum right deflection. So that would be that corner right there. Okay, so it's because my left dog leg for my min range is gonna be it's going to be my left maximum quadrant, which is this one here. And because this is my center deflection, I'd be comparing the data with this deflection right here. All right. And then for uh, this final one here at the min range, maximum deflection on the right would be this point right here, uh, which is going to be my dog leg on the right for my max quadrant. And then it's going to be my deflection overall here on the right for my deflection. Okay. So that's so that's. Uh, the corner I would shoot and then the portion of the pre-ox safety tee that I would compare the new data to. And we're going to walk through an example here uh, together. Okay. So let's uh, just flip this over. I'll use this as a scratch work here in a minute. Okay. So once I determine new data to those particular points that I identified, um, I'm going to go through this, this flow chart, right? So let's say uh, that in our scenario, so this is from the safety two classroom scenario. Let's say that this is my basic safety diagram, right? I'm shooting low angle, charge one, uh, HE mic seven under five. I have my min range of three nine hundred, my fuse time min range of four one hundred, max range of five seven hundred um, with a dog leg on the left, max range six two hundred with my dog leg on the right. Okay, and then this is the preoccupation safety team that we um, that we calculated, you know, before we came to the field. All right, so. Which corner, after I occupy, which corner would I tell my chart operator and computer to calculate data to, to determine new data and compare that new data to the old safety T to determine whether or not I need to update safety? Because it's, it's a low angle, it would be the maximum range with the de uh, deflection on the right, which would be this corner right here, okay? So that would be uh, the max quadrant of 550 that I'm gonna compare this new data to with uh, my far right deflection of 2914. Okay, so uh, let's say that um, you know we occupy, we we tell we tell them to calculate data to this particular corner, and the chart operator and the and the computer come back with this. Say, okay, the uh, the old quadrant, uh, the old quadrant from the safety T. We said here was five five zero, and the new quadrant that we just calculated, uh, let's say they come back and they say it's uh, 547. It's 547. Okay, and then uh, they also come back and they say, all right, the uh, deflection, the deflection to that corner, so let's say the old deflection we said was 2914, and the new deflection, uh, let's say they come up with 2899, okay? So we need to determine whether or not we need to update safety. Um, and what we're gonna do is we're gonna do the quadrant first and we're gonna determine if we need to update base safety based off quadrant um, or if we need to update it based off of deflection. And we follow this uh, flow chart right here. So the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna determine my delta quadrant or my change in quadrant. And this is always a, uh, an absolute value. So I'm just finding the difference between my old quadrant from my safety T and my new quadrant that I just calculated um, here at the firing point. Okay, so delta quadrant is going to be equal to, right? And so we're just gonna take the, the smaller number minus, or the bigger number minus the smaller number. So it'd be 550 minus 547. So my delta quadrant is three mils, okay? And I can see here, uh, I take that delta quadrant and I multiply the, the table fox column five value in the TFT. Right. What I'm going to use is, uh, let's see here, I'm shooting charge one, and the range at that point that I just calculated was 6200. Okay, so I'm going to take out my Alfa Romeo 2. I'm going to refer to, so your table Fox, uh, make sure I'm shooting low angle, and we said it was range 6200. Okay, so at 6200, let's see here, uh, the, va the column five value at 6200 is 6. Okay, so I would take my three mils and multiply that times six meters. 
What this value says is that this is the change in range per every one mil change in elevation. So as my uh, howitzer tube goes up or down by one mil, that means the point of impact on the ground at range 6200 will change by six meters. So I'm gonna take uh, three, which is our delta quadrant. I'm gonna take three times six, and that comes out to a value of one eight. Okay, that's one eight meters of change on the ground uh, based off my delta quadrant, okay? So now I come here. Is the delta quadrant that we just calculated, oh, we also express this to the nearest meter, right? So we keep that at one eight meters. Is delta quadrant uh, greater than 100 meters? Is one eight meters greater than 100 meters? No, technically we would not have to update, right? We don't have to update this based off of quadrant, all right? So, um, once we hit that, we say, all right, I don't have to update off quadrant. Let's go ahead and go to deflection. See if I have to update based off deflection. All right. So uh, first thing I need to do is I need to find my delta deflection the exact same way. The difference between my old deflection I had for my safety tee and the new deflection that I just had my, uh, my FTC calculate to this corner of the safety box. Okay, so that would be 2914 minus 289 or niner, which would be a delta deflection of 15 mils. All right, my delta deflection is 1.5 mils. Then I see I multiply times my range in thousands, and we said our range to this point was 6,200, so that'd be 6.2, divided by the smart guy factor, which is 1.0186, and then I'm going to express that answer to the nearest meter. All right, so that's 1.5 multiplied times 6.2, divided by 1.0186, uh, which gives me, um, hold on, let me do that one more time. 1.5 times 6.2, gives me 93 uh, divided by 1.0186 uh, comes out yep there it is comes out to uh, 91.301786 meters which then express to 91 meters okay so that's my delta deflection on the ground is 91 meters so is delta deflection greater than 100 meters if the answer is no no need to update so do I need to update safety based off of this new information? No, I don't need to update based off of quadrant and I don't need to update based off of deflection, all right? Um, let's run through an example of um, when I would have to update. So let me get a straight edge here. We'll just run through, uh, run through a new scenario here. Okay, still using the old safety tee, uh, still using the old safety tee that we had. Uh, which is this one here, this old pre-ox safety tee, right? I still have my FTC calculate data to this top right-hand corner. Um, and let's say, so we said that the old quadrant was 550. Old deflection, oop, I spelled the word old. Old deflection we said was 2914. Okay, let's say our old quadrant was 550 and our new quadrant was 582. Okay, so the new quadrant we calculated here was 582. Old deflection was 2914. Uh, new deflection that we calculated in postdoc um, was, let's see here, 2810. Okay, so I go through my flow chart now. All right, so first thing, uh, let's do quadrant first. So I gotta find my delta quadrant. So that would be 582 minus 550. We're looking for the absolute value, right? Delta is the measure of absolute value. So delta quadrant is equal to 32 mils, but I have to convert that to meters, right? So how do I do that? I go to table Fox, column five, and I multiply this value times my delta quadrant. Okay, and we said based off of our basic safety diagram, we're at range 6200 at this point that we're calculating for. So 6200, uh, the column five value is six, right? So it'd be uh, 32 multiplied times six meters is gonna give me 192 meters is my change in quadrant on the ground is 192 meters, okay? So is the delta quadrant that we just calculated greater than 100 meters? Yes, it is. All right, so now uh, I need to determine whether or not the delta quadrant is greater than four probable errors in range. So I need to do four probable errors in range is equal to four multiplied times one probable error. Where do we get that? That's in table golf, right? So I'm still in charge one, 
and we said that uh, the range here that we're calculating for is 6200. 6200 is not a listed value, um, but for determining when I need to update safety, I don't want to have to interpolate, so I'm just going to use the next highest range. So this is 6500, and I see the probable error in range is 4. So 4 probable errors in range, so that's 4 times, what's my value for 1 probable error in range at 6500? It's 4. So 4 times 4 equals 1 6. Okay, so is my delta quadrant of 192 greater than 4 probable errors in range expressed in the nearest meter? Yes, so I would have to update, right? Yes. Update because delta quadrant is equal to 192, right? Is, bas is basically the reason why. Is my delta quadrant is greater than, uh, uh, is 192, it's greater than 100 meters, and it's greater than four probable errors in range. So we would have to update safety based off of this, but let's just go ahead and look at our deflection and get a rep in there, okay? So I see that my uh, old deflection is 2914 for my pre ox safety T, and my new calculated deflection is 2810. So we need to find our delta deflection. Okay, uh, our delta deflection is equal to it's the absolute value, so that'd be 2914 minus 2810, so that gives me delta deflection of 104. Let me do that one more time just to make sure I did that correctly. Yep, 104 mils, okay? Then I multiply that uh, times range in thousands, which we said was 6.2. Then divide that by my smart guy factor of 1.0186. Okay, so that's 104. Multiply times 6.2 divided by 1.0186. Uh, comes out to 633.02572, which are just expressed to 633 meters. Or meters, not mils. 633 meters. Okay, so now I have my delta deflection. Is delta deflection greater than 100 meters? Yes, I would have to update. So the answer would be yes. Update because uh, delta deflection equals 633 meters. Okay, so um, that's really it, right? If I we just we just went through this um, just to determine whether or not I would have to update based off deflection. We typically do it off a quadrant first because quadrant is going to be the most likely culprit that we need to update safety, right? In this particular case. Um, I have to meet both these criteria. My delta quadrant has to be greater than 100 meters and it has to be greater than four probable errors in range. If I had a delta quadrant that was greater than 100 meters, but it was not greater than four probable errors in range, I would still not have to update based off a quadrant, um, but I would still check deflection, okay? So, uh, so there you have it. That's uh, how we determine whether or not we need to update safety.